It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Nearly 6 million Americans have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Diabetes and prediabetes are rapidly on the rise. According to today's guest, Dr. Stephen Masley, while most people understand the effect that elevated blood sugar has on their cardiovascular health, few understand that insulin resistance is also damaging to the brain. Dr. Masley joins us today to discuss the link between insulin resistance and brain function and to offer a program that can reverse and stop cognitive decline before it's too late. Dr. Masley is a physician, nutritionist, author, and the creator of Public Television's 30 Days to a Younger Heart. He's the author of The Better Brain Solution, How to Start Now at Any Age to Reverse and Prevent Insulin Resistance of the Brain, Sharpen Cognitive Function, and Avoid Memory Loss. Welcome, Dr. Masley. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Joan. I'm really delighted to be with you today. Dr. Masley, you've spent more than 20 years treating patients for heart conditions, and now you're teaching us about the brain. How are the heart and the brain linked? Well, they're intimately linked. And in, in our clinic, we have look at over 100 markers of aging. We assess our people growing artery plaque, their cholesterol, their blood pressure, but we also look at brain performance. We look at brain speed and memory, and we compare that with lifestyle, like the food they eat, their nutrients they ingest, their fitness, their stress management, and their toxin exposure. And we've been able to publish on over a data from 1,000 patients showing what choices we make impact our brain function. And um, actually, cardiovascular health is one of the strongest predictors. If you're growing plaque in your arteries, sadly, your brain is shrinking at the same time. And the number one cause for both of those, as you just said, is blood sugar and insulin resistance. So if we could stop that, I mean, we have the potential to get rid of at least 90% of heart disease and probably anywhere from 60 to 90% of memory loss. So, Doctor, insulin resistance is the key. What is it? Well, insulin's the hormone that tells your cells to store energy. So when someone eats it's refined carbs in particular, like bread or potatoes or sugar, their blood sugar levels surge up, their insulin rises to push that energy into the cell, but eventually the cells are full. I mean, if we keep eating those foods with the sad standard American diet, we fill up our cells and become insulin resistant to the insulin's message. The irony is when our brain cells become insulin resistant, they shut down. They're no longer functional. They stop using glucose as energy, even though blood Blood sugar levels are high. So people have brain fog, confusion, they're more forgetful, they forget why they walked into a room or somebody's name. And you know, if that is just not just a daily choice, but an ongoing lifestyle, they have ongoing brain function and their cells start to die. And over time, their brain sh- literally shrinks. So insulin resistance decreases brain performance and It's the number one cause for Alzheimer's disease and brain shrinkage. Is what we eat the main cause of insulin resistance or are there other factors? Well, there's at least five factors. I always think of food as, I'm glad you said that because I think of food as really number one. You know, it's the most powerful thing we can easily modify and change. And it has a huge impact on insulin resistance. But our nutrients, our fitness, how we manage our stress, And some toxins we can be exposed to, all of those impact insulin resistance. And those are really the five steps for the better brain solution. Doctor, what does the science say about the connection between insulin resistance and brain function? Well, the science has become pretty solid that we now know those people with insulin resistance are much more likely to get Alzheimer's. They have decreased brain performance. But the good news is it's really reversible. This is something we can change very quickly with simple lifestyle choices, choosing the right foods, avoiding foods that have a high sugar load, like flour and sugar, um, adding activity. It's actually quite easy to get rid of insulin resistance, bring blood sugar control back to normal, and have 
um, improved brain function. In fact, the patients in our clinic who've gone through our program, um, we've actually done randomized clinical trials, published the results, and we know our average patient is 25% sharper. It's almost as if someone gave them a faster computer that they can get their work done with. So eating brain-boosting foods, getting fit, what are the other steps to your better brain solution? Well, there's some key nutrient deficiencies that can absolutely impact your brain, like vitamin D, B12, folates, magnesium. Um, More than half of people are deficient in these nutrients. It's super common. So I want to really show people in an easy way, how can they avoid the most common nutrient deficiencies that impact brain function and help them make sure that they don't suffer from that needlessly when it's so easy to correct. We said that food is probably the number one cause of insulin resistance. So let's focus on that for a moment. What food should we be eating that would improve our cognitive function? And what are the no-nos? What should we avoid at all costs? Well, let me start with the ones to add first because that's easier to do, tell people what to add, especially if they like some of them. So one, I mean, so powerful, green leafy vegetables. You know, it doesn't sound that sexy, but somebody who eats a cup of green leafies a day, their brain is 11 years younger than someone who doesn't. 11 years is a lot. So that's like broccoli, kale, um, Brussels sprouts, um, Swiss chard, anything that's like green leafy. So it's, I mean, there's got to be something most people like they can have a cup a day. And doctor, um, I, want to inter- I want to just interrupt yeah. for a moment. How should they be cooked? Is overcooking, does that kill the nutrients? Um, yes. I mean, if you cook them till they're soft and they've lost their color, I mean, like broccoli and kale, you want them still to be vibrant green when they're cooked. So yeah, they can be eaten raw or equally good. You can steam them. You can saute them like with olive oil. Um, Just don't, I'm really glad you said that, Mm -hmm. Joan, just don't overcook them because that you can ruin them if you cook, you know, if you like boil them until they're mushy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, that would ruin them. That's a very good point. Okay, so in addition to green leafy veggies, what else should we be adding in? Well, on any of the colorful vegetables, like beets, really have been shown to improve blood supply to the brain, especially the brain area that where we do cognitive function and processing and memory. Um, we also want berries for their pigments and cherries. Those blue, red, purple pigments are really protect our brain. Other pigments that are super helpful are like um, dark chocolate and cocoa and green tea, especially um, matcha green tea. I mean, super helpful. And even coffee, I mean, is actually very beneficial for your brain. Um, The pigments do have benefits, but we do want to keep it in coffee's got to be in moderation because too much is harmful. Um, A little bit is better than none. And we're really looking at two, not more than three cups a day, preferably. So, I mean, there's pigments that if we eat more of them, you improve your brain function and you decrease decline. But we also need fat for our brain. I think that one of the coolest recent studies compared a low-fat diet with a Mediterranean-style diet. And whether they added more nuts or they added extra, um, extra virgin olive oil, either way, when people added more smart fat, they had their brain cognitive function improved and they had less cognitive decline. And those people on a low-fat diet had accelerated cognitive decline. So I think from a brain perspective, we can finally put this to rest and say, yes, some fats are bad, but we need smart fats. We don't want to be following a low-fat diet. Okay, doctor, so what are the no-nos? What should we be avoiding? Well, sugar and flour. I mean, so if insulin resistance is the number one cause for brain dysfunction and memory loss, we want to stop feeding that. And the most important thing to do is to cut sugar and flour out of our diets. And when I say flour, I mean whether it's, if you took three bowls, a bowl of sugar, a bowl of white flour, and a bowl of whole wheat flour, yes, the whole wheat has more nutrients, but the sugar response and the insulin resistance are exactly the same. When we take a grain and we grind it up into flour, it acts just like table sugar. So we really want to cut, unless it's your birthday or your child's birthday and you're having birthday cake, fine. But that's a special occasion, day in and day out. We need to get the flour out of our diet. We need to get the sugar out of our diet. And if we did that alone, that would have a huge benefit. Doctor, what about wheat? There are some programs that say wheat is not healthy for the brain. What, What have you read about that? Well, at least 20% of the U.S. population is gluten sensitive, and this is probably true. And I mean, it's less than Europe. It might be 5 to 10% because they don't have as much GMO wheat as we do. We have a more allergenic form of wheat. 
so, but 20% is a lot, and that means an autoimmune disease that can cause brain injury, multiple sclerosis, um, inflammation of the brain, as well as gut problems. And so at least 20% should absolutely never touch it and totally cover it, cut it out, and there's testing for that. And I discussed that in detail in the Better Brain Solution book. But I, there's nothing redeeming about wheat. I mean, it's not like there's nutrients there we can't get elsewhere. And since most wheat is processed into flour, which acts like sugar, I mean, almost everybody would be better cutting down on wheat or cutting it out mostly. But 20% of people absolutely should have nothing to do with it. Doctor, you said that it's important for us to manage stress. Why is meditation so beneficial for brain function? Well, here's the thing. When we're, I mean, I think this day and age is more stressful than ever before. Just our handheld devices keep us connected to people that we may not even know 24 seven. I mean, it's a nonstop barrage. And if we're stressed out and we don't proactively manage it, our cortisol levels go up. And when cortisol is a hormone that goes up to help us handle like an emergency, like a burglar chasing us down the street or a lion chasing us on the safari, I mean, that's what cortisol's for to get us through that short minute process. But today, people are stressed out 24 seven, day in and day out, and cortisol raises blood sugar. You lose muscle and bone mass, but it, it makes you grow more artery plaque. But the worst is it literally shrinks your brain. So people who are stressed out have high cortisol and the memory center of their brain, the hippocampus is shrinking. So one of the most effective tools we could do proactively is meditation. And it doesn't take that long. 10 minutes a day has been shown to really lower cortisol levels, help us be more focused, improve our blood pressure. It's really good for your brain. So 10 minutes of meditation can have an amazing benefit on long term, and it's an essential part of the whole program. The book is The Better Brain Solution, How to Start Now at Any Age to Reverse and Prevent Insulin Resistance of the Brain, Sharpen Cognitive Function, and Avoid Memory Loss by Dr. Stephen Masley. If you'd like more information, you can visit the website drmasley.com. That's D-R. M-A-S-L-E-Y, drmasley.com. Doctor, in about 30 seconds or less, what's the takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? Don't wait. Humans procrastinate, and too often they wait till they have a symptom like memory loss. But by the time you have memory loss, your brain is already shrinking. Don't wait until your brain shrinks. Take actions today so you can improve your brain function, improve your quality of life, feel better, feel fantastic, and prevent memory loss. Dr. Massey, thank you so much for being here with us and for sharing ways that we can improve brain function while preventing memory loss and heart disease. Your strategies can help transform healthcare to a more preventative and less reactionary approach. So thank you for sharing with us. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.